and on Passover, we are transformed, taken to a higher level. And one of the things that we use to take us to a higher level is the matzah. And on the night of Passover, we elaborate on this commandment of matzah. We say, matzah zu, this matzah that we eat. You know why we eat it? Because on the day of Passover, we were getting ready to leave, and we had no provisions. We were going to bake some bread, apparently. And the Egyptians started chasing us out. We had no choice. We had to make it into matzah, because that's quicker. And because of that, this is what we eat during the seven days of Passover, which is strange, just because the Egyptians chased us out. That is why we have to eat matzah for seven days, for 3,321 years now. That doesn't make too much sense, does it? Another question that we have, according to the simple way that it's explained, uh, the Israelites were getting ready to bake bread. Now, this is Passover. Passover, we don't break bre bake bread. We're not supposed to have any bread in our possession. And the first Passover, they were obligated to keep at least one day of Passover. And you're not supposed to have any bread in the house. How did that work? So, there are two classical answers first answer is that of the famous rabbi, Rabbi Cheskel Lando of Prague, known as the Noda Behuda, and he says the following, he says, we were obligated to keep one day of Passover in that first Passover time, but that one day started from noon when we began to, to offer the Paschal Lamb until noon the next day, and by noon the next day we were leaving. Still, it doesn't explain why we make a whole big deal of the matzah. If all it was is because we had convenience. The Egyptians chased us out, and we didn't have any other provisions. The second answer is given by Rabbi Nisim of the 14th century, Nisim of Gironda, known as the Ran, and he says the following. He says, the reason why you're not allowed to have bread in your house or bake bread during Passover is because you may come to eating it. But if it's only a one-day holiday, we're not worried that you may come to eating it. So therefore, that year, it was, it was okay if you baked bread because for the next day. It's a good answer. But it doesn't explain why we should make this the staple for seven days and the diaspora for eight days. And so there's another answer given by the Alter Rebbe of Shneir Zalman of Lati. And he explains that everything in the world that we have is a reflection of our spiritual makeup. Anything that we see in the world teaches us something about ourselves. And the reason why dough sours and rises is to teach us about ourselves. That you ever see dough when it starts out, it's, it's nice and flat. You have this nice dough, it's flat. But in order for it to become bread, it starts rising. And it blows up to about ten times its original proportion. And you know what that's a symbol of? It's a symbol of my and yours ego. The ego, the person is only this big. The ego makes him that big. And when it's that big, an ego, he doesn't have ability to see outside of himself. If your hand suddenly is 20 times the size and it's in front of you, you don't see anybody in front of you. You don't care about anybody else. It's to worry about feeding yourself. And so... The reason why there is a sourdough is because that's to teach us what we're like when we're egotistical and selfish. We blow ourselves up beyond proportion. We're really not that big and important. We just make ourselves that way. And all this is a bunch of gas, a bunch of chemicals. And so, on that night of Passover, God appears to the 
people of Israel. I'm going to tell you something new that you never heard before. We, one of the things that we commemorate on the night of Passover is at exactly midnight, at the strike of twelve, the stroke of twelve. All the Egyptians firstborn were, died. This is a problem. Our God is a baby killer. Is this the God that we revere? And so the great sage, Rabbi Chaim, Ibn Attar, known as the Or Chaim, explains it the following way. You know, you and I, we have a spirit called the soul. Not all of the soul enters our body. Some of the soul, most of the soul actually, is above our body. It's called the transcendent light of the soul. And that cannot be tainted by our evil inclination. And that's the good part of the soul for everybody. That part of the soul is aware of goodness and is attracted to goodness. When God appeared on the night of Passover, all the firstborns, both the Israelites and the Egyptians, sensed the presence of God. And goodness is attracted, like iron is attracted to a magnet. Goodness is attracted to God. And all the souls wanted to leave their bodies and connect to God. But God had anticipated that and gave the people of Israel the mitzvahs of the commandments of circumcision. Yeah, it's a commandment to circumcise all of your children, yourself. And the, and the commandment to offer the first of uh, the Paschal Lamb. And so we had two commandments that we fulfilled that night. And so it wasn't necessary for our soul to leave our bodies in order to connect to God because the soul was connecting to God in the body itself through the mitzvahs. But the Egyptian children had no mitzvah. And those firstborn children that sensed the presence of God were attracted to God like iron to a magnet. And they left. And so on the night of Passover, there's a tremendous revelation of God. You know, when God reveals God's self to people, there's a change that takes place. You know what the change is? We're not that important. The only thing that's important is the divine purpose, what God has for us. And most of the time it's in order to be good people, to share things with other people, and to be happy, and to, and to take care of others, and to care about them as we care for ourselves. And so the, that means when God comes around, we become less egotistical. In fact, the greater the revelation of God, the less ego we got. And so that night of Passover, we lost our egos. We lost our selfishness. We were like Adam before the sin. And for that reason, if man has no, if those people had no ego, no sourdough, no, nothing that bloats them bigger and more important than anybody else, the dough couldn't rise. It was a miracle. But the reason for the miracle was we didn't have an evil inclination. There was no need to have the dough rising. Because the purpose of dough rising is to teach us to be humble. If you're humble already, there's no reason to have it rise. And so, the reason why we matzah for seven days is to commemorate God appearing to us and changing us so that we weren't so selfish. We weren't so egotistical. We lost the ability to blow our persona and our self-importance up so we shouldn't see the other person. We lost that. We try to regain that feeling of humility, unity, love, 